Hey, welcome to your very last homework assignment of the year. Let's start with the first one. What is the law of reflection? It is this. The angle of incidence or incoming light equals the angle of reflection. That's an R, by the way. All right, now i got to make this a little bit bigger so we can see these next ones. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do here is... Uh, I'm supposed to draw normal lines from each ray and then draw the reflected ray. See that? Draw the normal lines, draw the reflected. So let's start off. I'll use blue. I'll use blue for the normal lines. So I'm going to draw a normal line here and here and here and here. Whoops, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Hang on a second. Let me erase that. Whoops. Okay, let's try that. And let's see, i got to have some normal lines here. Notice they're perpendicular to the surface at the point that the ray makes contact. Now I'm going to draw the reflected ray. Alright, so as this one comes in this way, it's going to reflect that way. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. This one's going to come in this way. And it's going to go out that way. Now, on the next one here, what's going to happen is it's going to come in this way and go out that way, come in this way and go out that way. So the incoming rays equal the outgoing rays. Incoming rays equals the outgoing. Notice how these ones don't get any closer or farther apart. Uh, they stay parallel. Uh, now let's try the next one. So with my concave one, what we'll find is the incoming ray will exit in this uh, angle, and this one here will reflect in that angle, and they cross right here forming a focus. So let's see what we've got on some of these other questions. So which of the three mirrors could be used to start a fire? Uh, the one that we could use to start a fire would be this one right over here because it has a focus uh, this right here is a point where all the light energy will be condensed into one small area and therefore I could use it to light a fire or magnify an image let's see what we've got now alright what type of mirror is shown above this would be what we call a concave mirror and possibly it might be a parabolic mirror if this is a parabola, then it's a parabolic mirror. But right now we'll just call it concave. Put a letter A at the focus. Here's A. There's the focus. Put a letter B where it would be right side up but magnified. So here, B, it would be right side up and magnified. And C, here it would be inverted. Because if you notice, uh, whoops, uh, let's try this. This one would come in this way and end up down here. And the one from the bottom would come this way and end up here. So on this side here, the blue is over the red, so it got inverted. Number 9. What is the equation for determining the index or refraction of a substance? The index or refraction is this. It is a unitless number that is simply telling me the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum so I'll just say that was C uh, versus the speed of light in the substance so in other words if the index of refraction is 2 what it really means is the speed of light is 2 times faster in a vacuum than it is in the substance so let's just see if we can find this uh, let's see um, so like if we just look at this one here, what we're saying is light travels 1.8 times slower in this substance than it does in a vacuum. And here it travels 1.5 times slower. So since this is a bigger number, that means light is traveling even slower. But with that in mind, we're going to try number 11. Complete the ray diagrams for the... Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. we got to do this. Draw the refracted ray for each of the diagrams below. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a normal line. And then we're going to do a dashed line where it would have gone had it not ref refracted. 
Now since in this case it's slowing down when it goes from air into water, it's going to bend towards the normal. When, remember when light slows down, it bends towards the normal. So if it comes in this way, it's going to bend towards the normal. Now let's look at this next one. I'm going to draw a normal line. I'm going to draw a dashed line showing where this beam of light would have gone had it not refracted. And then I'm going to ask myself, is this beam of light going to speed up or slow down as it leaves the air and enters the glass? And the answer is it's going to slow down when it enters the glass. So when things slow down, remember, they bend towards the normal. So therefore, if it came in this way, it's going to bend towards the normal. Now let's try the next one. I'm going to draw a normal line. And in this case, I'm also going to draw a line showing where it would have gone had it not been refracted. And now I say, well, you know what, in this case, as it goes from an index of refraction of 1.8 to 1.5, this means 1.8 times slower than normal. This means 1.5 times. So it's speeding up as it enters the substance. The smaller the light has, I mean, a vacuum has an index of refraction of 1, and that's as fast as you can go. So the smaller the number, the faster it's going. So this is speeding up. So when it speeds up, instead of bending towards the normal, it's going to bend away from the normal. Let's try the next one. Let's complete the ray diagrams below. Whoops. Sorry, below we ended up on a different page. Uh, so we're going to assume that light travels slower in the lens, so it's slower here than it is in the surrounding medium. So when it is going to be slower here than it is here and here, it's going to be slower here than it is here and here. So let's make this a little bit bigger. Here we go. All right. All right, so the first thing I need to do is draw normal lines. I'll draw those in blue. So there's a normal line, here's a normal line, and here's a normal line. Remember, it's perpendicular to the surface at the point the ray enters. Now, what happens is, this one is entering along, the, whoops, this one here is entering along the normal, so it's just going to continue straight. And it's going to leave at the normal, so it's going to go without being bent at all because it's always on the normal. But let's look at this next one. This next one's going to bend towards the normal. So it's going to bend down a little bit as it comes. It's going to come in this way. Whoops. Come this way and it's going to bend down. This one's going to come in come in this way and bend towards the normal. That didn't show a very good job bending towards the normal. Okay, it's going to bend towards the normal. Now I need to draw normal lines again. Here's a normal and here's a normal. And instead of going in this direction, or this direction, since it's speeding up, it will bend away from the normal. And so that means this light is going to go this way. Notice how it bent away from this normal. And this ray, which would have gone that way, will bend away from this normal and go this way. Okay. Okay, let's try this concave lens here. So again, what I'm going to do is, first off, I'm going to draw the uh, normal lines. So here's one here, and this one's coming in along the normal, and a normal line here. So what I have to do then is, I'm going to say, well, what direction would this have gone had it not been refractive? Now, remember, as it enters the glass here, What's going to happen is it's going to slow down, and when it slows down, it bends towards the normal. So here comes a ray of light. It comes in, and now, instead of going this way, it's going to bend towards the normal. So that ray of light is going to go off in this direction here. Now this one's coming in along the normal, and since it's along the normal, it can't bend any closer to the normal, so it's just going to continue going straight, both in and out of it. But let's look at this next one. It comes in this way, and now it slows down, and when it slows down, it is going to bend, instead of going this way, it's going to bend towards the normal, so it's going to go this way. Now it's exiting. As it exits, I have to stop and go, well, hang on a second, now it's going to speed up. So, uh, once again, I'm going to draw normal lines, perpendicular to the surface of the material. And then I'm going to use little uh, black dot, dot, dot dashes to show this is where it would have gone had it not refracted. But let's start with the one on top. Okay, 
So instead of going this way, as it comes out and it speeds up, this line is going to bend away from this normal, so it's going to bend that way. And similarly, this one down below, instead of continuing like on this direction here, it's going to bend away from this normal line. So it's going to end up going this way. And you see we're spreading those light waves out considerably. Let's try the next one. Ooh, we have a biconvex lens, kind of like what's in your eyeball. So, again, let's start off by drawing some normal lines. And I'll try my best to get them right. It's a little tricky. Okay, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and, and go through the process. This one's going to come in, and it's going to bend towards the normal. This one's coming in along the normal, so it doesn't bend. It's going out along the normal, so it doesn't bend. This one's coming in, and it's going to bend towards the normal. Now, I have to, now as we exit, I have to once again draw normal lines. Here's a, that's a terrible normal line. Here's one here. Okay, that's a much better. You know, it's still a little bit not quite perpendicular. Okay, now, as this exits, this one is going to bend away from the normal. And this one will bend away from the normal. And so we see we get a focal point there. And I didn't do the best job of drawing these, I apologize for that. Alright, let's see what we got here now. Okay. So I'm giving you the index of refraction for different substances. I just would like to take a moment to explain to you what index of refraction really means. So, when I say that water has an index of refraction of 1.33, what that really means is that light travels through water 1.33 times slower than it does through a vacuum. And when it passes through glass, it goes 1.66 times slower. And when it passes through diamond, which has the highest index of refraction of all, it goes through it 2.4 times slower than it would through air. So, with that information, I'm going to try to draw these ray diagrams. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw normal lines. Normal line, normal line. Now I'm going to draw a dashed line showing where these rays would have gone had they not been refracted. But they are refracted. So let's start with the benzene and water. So what I do here is I say, well, in benzene, it slowed down at 1.5, and in water, it's 1.3. So the way it works is the smaller the number, the less it's slowed down. In other words, the bigger the number, the slower it's going. So it's going slower in benzene and faster in water. So remember, as it speeds up, it's going to bend away from the normal. So this line coming in this with the ray coming in this way is going to bend away from the normal. I guess I could have bent it a little more away from the normal. Now let's try the next one. Uh, this next one is coming from glass, which has an index of refraction of 1.66, and it's entering diamond, which is going to slow it down 2.44. So it's going almost but not quite two times slower in, in the diamond than it is in the glass, so it's going to bend towards the normal. So since it's slowing down, instead of following that path shown by those dashed lines, it's going to bend towards the normal. And how far towards the normal will it bend? Well, that's something we're going to do with Snell's Law, but first let's try this. What is the speed of light through carbon tetrachloride? So remember, that the way the equation works is this. Uh, we're going to say the index of refraction equals uh, the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in that material. So if the index of refraction, I'm just going to substitute into these different values, the index of refraction of carbon tetrachloride is 1.46. 1.46 and I know that the velocity of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And I'm going to solve that for the velocity in carbon tetrachloride. So we're going to do the old Swaparuski. And let's just see what that actually ends up being. In that case, the vol oops, huh. in that case, what we're going to find is the velocity equals, hang on, I'll do some calculations. And that's what we're going to get is uh, 2.05 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So it is slower. Instead of 3 times 10 to the 8th, it's 2.05. Uh, okay, well, let's just keep going. What is the index of refraction of cubic zirconium? 
uh, if light travels through it this fast. Now remember guys, cubic zirconium, it's the best way to go. Alright, so again, we're going to use this equation here. The index of refraction equals C over V, where V is the speed of light in the substance, and C is the speed of light in a vacuum. So, uh, let's see. So I'm just going to solve for M. So in that case, I know that C is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And I know the velocity of light in cubic zirconium is 1.36 times 10 to the 8th. Uh, you know what? I know this. I'm just going to take a shortcut. I'm not going to use my EE key since this is 10 to the 8th and this is 10 to the 8th. They both cancel out. I can say, you know what? Those just cancel each other out. So really all I have to do is I would say 3 divided by 1.36. Let's see what that gives me. 3 divided by 1.36 gives me an index of refraction of 2.20. So index of refraction of cubic zirconium is 2.20. And do you really think your fiancé has an eye so good that she can tell the difference between 2.4 and 2.2? There's only one way to find out. Uh, let's see, let's scroll up here. Now, Snell's Law. Let's see if I can squeeze this in here. What is Snell's Law? Snell's Law is this. It is, if you take the index of refraction of the incident material and you multiply it by the sine of the angle of incidence. That's the, the, the angle that the incoming light makes to the normal line. It equals the index of refraction of the substance the light is moving into times the sine of the angle of refraction. So let's try using that in this next, this next one here, number 16. So what we want to do is we want to find the index of refraction of this material here, polystyrene. So, now, yeah. I happen to know from the information above that water has an index of refraction of 1.33. Let's just see if I'm right about that. Uh, hang on, is it 1.33? Yep, there it is. Look, water is 1.33. So, therefore, that's the... N sub i, that's the index of refraction of the incoming material. And it makes an angle of 48 degrees. So first, I'm going to make sure my calculator is in the correct mode. Oh good, mine is in degrees. Make sure yours is in degrees. So what we're going to say then is, let's move this up a little bit. We're going to say 1.33 times the sine of 48 degrees is going to be equal to the index of refraction of polystyrene in this case times the sine of 41.5 degrees. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to, what we're going to do then is we have to divide both sides. Oops. We have to divide both sides by the sine of 41.5. So this cancels out, and that's going to give me N2. Let's see what I get. Let me punch it into my calculator, and I'll give you that answer in just a quick second. And the answer is a very reasonable 1.49. And remember, uh, the index of refraction has no units because it's the speed of light divided by the speed of light. All right. And you know you've got it right. It's got to be more than one because one is the index of refraction of a vacuum. Uh, and the, that's the smallest index of refraction you can have. And 2.4 is the index of refraction of diamond, and it has the highest. So it's got to be between those two values if you've done it right. All right, now, ooh, tricky, tricky. We're going to use Snell, Snell's Law to find an angle. All right, but you know what? We can do this. You're far enough in math that I think you can figure this out. So what we got to do first is figure out the index of refraction. The index of refraction of water is 1.33. And the index of refraction of glass is 1.66. So we're going to, this is the rays coming in this way. These values are the incident ray and these are the refracted. So when I use Snell's law, I'm going to say uh, the I'm going to say the N of the incoming, the index of refraction of the incoming ray, 
times the sine of the angle of incidence, which is 36 degrees, is going to equal the index of refraction of the substance it's moving into times the sine of angle theta. And don't be a theta hater. So clearly what I have to do, whoops, I have to divide both sides by 1.66. And that's going to equal sine. So let's just see what the sine of theta equals. I'll be right back. Once I, well, you know, I'll just go ahead and enter my calculator in real time. Let's see how I do it. I'm going to say 1.33 times the sine of 36 divided by 1.66. That's 0.4709. 4709 equals the sine of it. So what I have to do is I have to take the negative sine of this. Because if I take the negative sine of the sine of theta, that gives me theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the negative sine of both sides. So the negative sine of 0 0.4709 is going to equal the negative sine of the sine of theta, which is theta. And so we should get an angle that is, if you think about it, since it's bent towards the normal, I'll know if I've done it right if I get an angle that is, well, more than zero and less than 36. Let's just see what I get. Okay, inverse sine. Oops, I hit the wrong button because mine are so worn out from use. They're not on there. Here we go. Inverse sine. Got it. 0.4709. gives me 28.1 degrees, 28.09 degrees. That is certainly a reasonable value. So that gives me theta equals 28.09 degrees. Hey, you got to love Snell's Law. Just, and, uh, it, what, Snell's Law. It's just great. Hey, Guys, that was our last homework of the year. Thank you for watching my web help videos. Thank you for being my students. It's been a great year for me. I hope it's been a great year for you, and I hope it's a great summer too. Uh, see you at the high school.